everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Um, thanks for being here. Um, see we have lots of moms in the chat room tonight and my mom is in the chat room tonight. Hi mom. Happy Mother's Day. Um, so hope all of you moms are uh, being pampered today and getting the treatment. I got chocolate covered strawberries like homemade chocolate covered strawberries. My uh, my hubby was so cute. Um, he got the kids all gathered up yesterday. I went thrift shopping yesterday. Yeah, my bad. And he couldn't wait. It was the first time ever. He couldn't wait for me to leave the house so they could go to the store and get all the stuff and make their chocolate covered strawberries. So when I got home, so I actually got them last night. I got a second batch made for me today, white and dark chocolate. It was very cool. Very cool. Um, so so glad you guys are here. If you're here for the first time or watching this in the replay for the first time, uh, we also send these shows on over to iTunes. If you want to just listen to the audio, um, you can find us over there. And if you go over to my YouTube channel, and April will post the link to that, I actually break the show up into four segments. That way, if there's just a particular part of the show you want to go back and watch, uh, you can do that without having to scale through the whole thing. So that's something new I just started doing. And uh, so if there's anything I do, uh, little tips of the week and stuff, anything you guys want to see demonstrated, even if it's something you think is completely simple, feel free to shoot me an email, let me know, because I love kind of demonstrating great little things that, you know, you would think that it just is common knowledge, but it's surprisingly there's a lot of people coming to the internet or, or getting used to the internet that are not, you know, as as savvy about some of the stuff. So I love to demonstrate that and, and send out those little videos for you guys. Yeah. Oh, thanks guys. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest for tonight. Um, many of you know Jean-Charles Campagnon of Kiwi Apps. He has been making some really cool things lately and I decided to uh, bring him on tonight to talk about one in particular uh, because uh, we have this little thing with the photo sizes coming up. Hey Jean-Charles! Hi everybody! And um, I apologize ahead of time, um, we can't quite figure out why the sound is not doing real good. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna plug through this because you can still make out what he's saying, hopefully. So, um, first, Sean Charles, um, tell us uh, your opinion of uh, maybe why you think eBay is getting so hardcore over the picture quality. Because I think we're on the same page with this one. Well, the picture quality is very important. It's what sells. We know uh, that nobody reads the description, including myself. I, I bought something yesterday, a little stylus for my kid, and I didn't read the description. I went with the picture. It's very visual. And personally, I sell some wig, which is even more visual than some other items. Within, within the first two seconds of looking at the picture, somebody knows if that's what they want or not. So, because eBay uh, is expanding uh, with the mobile market, and, and basically they need better pictures. So they've been trying to ask everybody to make better pictures for years, but not everybody um, listens to them because we're all busy. We all have so many things to do. We're all listing that it's kind of like you know pictures there sitting there, listing sales or or might not sell, but we're so busy that we're not looking at it. But in today's technology, it's very, very important to have good pictures because it sells. Right. You know, and, and I, I kind of, you know, I tell my appsters this and, and kind of push for this is that we are such a fast paced e-commerce world now. And you hear it all the time. Buyers don't read descriptions. Buyers don't read. Buyers don't read. No, they don't. They look at those pictures and they buy off of those pictures. So, you know, and there's technology coming that is going to be so focused on image recognition and all this. I mean, it is the future. So it's really important we get those pictures, you know, spruced up 
and and work and write and so eBay as they've actually been very liberal with the size of the pictures that they're requiring 500 pixels is really not that big of a picture um, and I really suggest that you guys have you know 1600 pixels or bigger because then you get the nice zoom feature really helps you sell those items but 500 pixels is the minimum so uh, Jean Charles you have an app that actually helps people go in and find uh, all those listings that they might have that that are going to fall prey to this new policy where they're they're not going to be able to relist those listings is that right that's correct basically uh, being that i'm an app developer and a seller myself i think just like everybody i looked at my listing and i'm like this is undoable how am i going to figure a big picture is too small which one is too big i just have too many listings so uh, made it part of uh, Geek Terminator, which is an app that we already had before, but uh, because we already had the, 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 the application, it was a faster process to get it approved with, with eBay. And so basically what our, uh, what our, what our little application does to, to find a better, it takes your link, downloads every single picture, and it checks the width of the picture. Now, the requirement for eBay is length or width, but I'll check the length because the idea is here is not really to, to tell you which listing will make it or not, but to help you find those listings that really needs to be improved. And if you have a, a you know, 10 pixel wide image that's 500 pixel long, it's not going to look good anyway. So you probably want to remove that one as well. And so we basically, uh, we have a server, and I created uh, what we call a cron job. So it's basically a job that runs in the background, and all it does all day is download those images from the thing and checks the width. And if it's below 501 pixel, I added one more pixel to make sure we we'll catch those that are 2500 pixel. Because if it's exactly 500 pixel, we don't really know how it is going to behave with those. Are they going to be good or not? Um, and, and there it tells you if it's like image number one or image number five. So I found that some of my listings, all of the pictures were good, but the image picture was just a little bit too small. So John Charles, we had a great question in the chat room. Is 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 there a way to filter the search results on your app to find only the pictures that are not up to policy? That's correct. That's what it does. It will check right. every single picture and it will give you a report, which by the way, uh, you can export to Excel, so if you want to work with it later, and it will tell you um, if the picture is okay, meaning it's more than um, 501 pixel, or if it's lower than 501 pixel. And if it is, it will tell you the actual number of pixel, which is again for the width, not the length as well. So, I, I mean, that's awesome. And, you know, I just learned something about this app, right, as I was talking to Jean-Charles before the show. Um, so my appsters know that I'm a big fan of if something's been listed a long time, hasn't sold, to end those and then sell similar again. And usually we go in and we'll lose some days that we've already paid for. Um, because we're kind of doing it on our schedule. So this same app that we're talking about, the Key Terminator, can also go in and, and correct me if I'm wrong, John Charles, it can schedule those listings that you pick out to end when they end, you know, instead of uh, having them go good till canceled again. So it'll find those, and then you can fix them up and, and relist them? That's correct. Basically, it keeps data started as a schedule to end items, and a scheduler to release the item. So on top of relisting, we added sales sequencer. And basically, when you put a rule, so you can just add a rule that would release an item or sell similar an item on whatever you want on your schedule. Uh, for example, if you want to release an item on Sunday afternoon and you're not going to be announced on Sunday afternoon, you can just set it to do it for you. And you can also uh, schedule it to end an item, and then when that ends to release or to sell similar right away or a day later or 40 days later. Of course, it has to be a listing that's uh, 
um, and that's available in eBay. You know, we can't do magic. We can't uh, release an item that's been off eBay for three years or something. Like that. Right. It's really practical for me as, as a seller because Sunday afternoon I'm in the park with my kid and then I go, oh, I forgot to release and then you know, suddenly it's Sunday and I look back and you're like, oh, I forgot. So now I just schedule it on Monday for the next Sunday and it does it all by itself. That's awesome. I, I actually, I am going to go download this app right after the show because I'm all about automating, scheduling, uh, making life easier. You know, I'm all about time is money and it sounds like your app is definitely falling into that, uh, that time savings mode. All those apps that we, that we do, basically, uh, I started as a seller like everybody else. And, um, you know, I, I started like everybody else. I like feedback, for example, or I, I rescheduled my item on Sunday one time, and then I did it time, and then suddenly when, when you have 100 listing, it gets to be unmanageable. And so I started to make those little applications like that for myself and went to a couple of conference in Vegas and EPM application and met that email from people. And everybody was talking about that they had to automate it. So, so then I created this, this company, Kiwi, to make application, uh, applications for, for everybody. And there's one more thing that's included in the kit that's really practical. I call, I call that on a small application, kind of like the, the picture, the small finder. I call them seasonal because basically six months from now, nobody will care. Everybody will take care of it. And, and those applications can go. But there is, uh, with Kitterrand, a, a, a duplicate finder. And it's not something that's going to help you uh, cheat the system. It will find exact duplicates. So let's say you have an assistant that released an item, and then another assistant released that same item, and you end up with duplicate, and you end up getting slapped by eBay. Well, right. application finds those, sends you a, a little email with the two items. Compared one by side by side, and with the click of a button, you can just get the items if you want. Yeah, I, I, I'm really excited. So, so just to give you guys a little teaser, uh, Jean Charles and I are going to be working together on, on some fun stuff coming up. So, um, it's time for the Danny app to have an app, eh? You know, so. Uh, I look forward to that. Look forward to what we can drum up for you guys. And um, John Charles, thank you so much for coming on and explaining that. Um, so everybody doesn't need to panic about those getting those pictures up to date. They could just get your app. And I, I got to tell you guys, what's the price of your your apps, John Charles? Uh, ninety nine cents per month. All of our apps are ninety nine cents per month. They really, really, really don't want to pay ninety nine cents a month. There's a seven-day free trial, so you can sign up for seven day, get all of your pictures that are not up to par, export that to Excel, and then unsign for the application. That's amazing. Ninety-nine cents a month, you guys. That his apps are ninety-nine cents a month. Who doesn't have ninety-nine cents a month for a killer app? Come on. So, um, thank you so much. We're going to be it's posting. We're going to be posting the link over on the Facebook group so you guys can go and find that and download it. Um, terrific stuff. Thank you so much, John Charles. I look forward to having you on again in the future. You sure will. Thank you, Danny. All right. Bye-bye. That was awesome, guys. I mean, I'm like excited. I'm, I got to tell you, I am the biggest procrastinator in the world about going and checking out new apps and programs and software and stuff because I get in my modes of, of doing things. Um, but I'm, I'm actually like really, really excited about this one. Um, not just the picture thing because most of my pictures have always been like, ginormous pictures uh, but the whole the whole scheduling thing uh, that we can get for 99 cents a month now I, I that's crazy so um, really excited about that um, just a real quick announcement guys uh, I have the new monthly series that I'm doing on glass and I know last week I announced the dates it would be starting and because we're doing some maintenance over on my website we have had to postpone that a week uh, so what's gonna happen um, 
I did the EAPG and American Brilliant Glass webinar last month. And this month, we're going to be doing Murano Glass, Venetian Glass, um, all that cool stuff. And we are going to be doing that webinar on Monday, May 27th is the new date. And there will be a sneak peek on May 20th. Uh, so mark those dates, May 20th and 27th, with the 27th being the main one. Uh, that will be announced in the newsletter this week. So watch for your newsletter on Friday. And if you are not signed up for the newsletter, you can find that over at my website, thedannyapp.com. And I think April will throw that up on the screen for you, just in case you can't find me. You know, if you do a Google search for the Danny app, you're going to find me. Almost any way you spell it, you're going to find me. <laughs> so um, this segment was brought to you by our new sponsor, Cabbage.com. Uh, you guys know I love Cabbage.com. I've been with them since the beginning. I will be with them to the end of time. Um, they are my, my backup if I go out there and I find some crazy cool opportunity and I don't have the liquid cash in my bank account, I just go to my cabbage.com account and I can get cash into my PayPal within 10 minutes. It's totally free to go over and see if you guys qualify. Um, it, does, it does go off your credit rating a little bit, but mostly it goes off your online seller reputation. Um, so I just love, love, love Cabbage. Give it a try. Check it out. The link, um, and April, you can put that back up one more time. That link was not an affiliate link, you guys. That link just lets them know that you got there from the Danny App Show. So that's why you see my name in that link. Uh, I just absolutely believe in Cabbage. They are awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, now you can take it off. <laughs> Love cabbage. All right.